Hello and welcome to the second review for Hosoda Month everyone. Last time I covered what was arguably Hosoda's best written film, The Girl Who Left Through Time, but today I'll be reviewing Hosoda's next film that's totally not a copy of the digital movie Our War Game, Summer Wars. Set in an almost blissful and utopian society, everyone around the world has integrated the world of Oz into their everyday life. Oz is essentially an upgraded family version of the internet where it has the power to control any networking system on the planet. Being Mamoru Hosoda's third feature film, today I ask, does Summer Wars explore the interesting ideas of technology being integrated into our daily lives? No, not really. And since RC anime wants to fight me, bring it on, Matt. Never turn your back on family, even when they hurt you. Never let life get the better of you. Summer Wars follows Kenji Koiso, a high school boy who is asked by secret crush Natsuki Shinohara to come help her for a summer job at her family's home. Shortly after, a deadly virus is released into the digital web and starts causing havoc amongst the world, having pipelines explode, triggering nuclear meltdowns, and launching nuclear missiles. Together with the power of friendship, everyone must stop the virus before any dangerous catastrophes are caused. Wait. What's that? I'm showing Digimon footage. Oh, sorry, I just got completely confused. You know, with the identical story and such. Following the plagiarism of the Digimon film, the fundamental story of Summer Wars is really simple and very predictable. What essentially happens is that the characters have to stop an evil virus from launching missiles and killing thousands of people. And guess what? They do! Shocking, right? I'm not even going to count that as a spoiler because anyone could have predicted that from the moment the crisis occurred. The climax of the film is very underwhelming and feels overly convenient. Come to think of it, the whole story of Summer Wars is caused by character convenience. I mean, the only reason why Love Machine was released in the first place was because of Kenji. Think about it, does it just so happen that the encrypted message was sent to Kenji's phone? Does it just so happen that Kenji's a math genius and can solve the problem? Why does he even attempt to solve it in the first place? I would have been completely fine with him getting tricked into solving it, but no, he solved it for his own free will. And if you say he's enthusiastic about math, then why wasn't he solving other equations beforehand? No matter how you look at it, there's no real reason or motivation for him to solve it other than to create content conflict within the story, and the conflict itself is the result by further convenience. I'm sorry, having a blood nose does not make you better at math. Trust me, I would know because I'm Asian and I have to do math for engineering, but having a blood nose actually hinders my ability to solve problems. So either he's unlocked a new superpower, or the story just threw away all sense of believability. The chances of everything happening in the sequence depicted in Summer Wars is so minuscule that I would give it a bullshit out of 10. It's like going to one of RC Anime's reviews, looking at the score, and saying that you have given it all the aspects the exact same score. Yeah, bullshit you would. So when I say Summer Wars is convenient in its story, I mean it's very convenient. With such a simple and predictable story, you would think that the film would focus more on its world building or themes. While it does somewhat do this, it's very lackluster. The idea of having the digital web integrated into people's lives is an interesting concept, but the film doesn't really explore this much but instead briefly touches upon it. I'm not saying it needs to be complex since this is a family film, but showing more of how technology is used within society would have been more interesting. Now people say the biggest appeal of Summer Wars is the family aspect of how relatable the interactions of the family is, although I think there's too many members for us to actually care about any of them. What I will say however is that it did portray having big family dinners really well. It was reminiscent of when you would gather with all your aunties, uncles, and cousins and see which family member would be the loudest at the table, so I can see it being relatable in that sense. However, the theme of family and its sub-themes of love, loss, hate, and responsibility have been done way better elsewhere. Things like Clan Ad After Story, Usagi Drop, and the much better film Wolf Children. Summer Wars is in no competition with any of them, so I find it quite surprising when someone says Summer Wars is their favorite Hosoda film, as other shows portray its themes better. If you haven't seen the Digimon movie, then Summer Wars will be quite fun and enjoyable. Though for the rest of us, we've already seen this film. This great granddaughter of mine is no pushover. Are you man enough to make my Natsuki happy? Huh? Oh, uh... Maybe? Similarly enough, the characters in Summer Wars are very bland. None of them have any distinctive personalities and all feel like they could have been replaced by someone else. Kenji Koiso is your excruciatingly average high school boy whose only real trait is that he's a genius at math, just like every other Asian. Except Matt. No part of him is interesting to watch as he's just so unmotivated and slow with everything he does. He's just so boring and uninteresting to watch as his only real purpose is to further progression in the plot. Natsuki Shinohara is the other apparent main character, but really she just gets sidelined throughout the whole film except for near the end. She's nice and has an outgoing personality, plus she's also in good terms with all her family members. There really isn't anything else, and you know what? That's all the main characters. All the supporting characters are from Natsuki's family and are completely forgettable because we don't actually know 
any of their names. Even the grandma who people say is quote unquote a badass, I don't really think so cause almost killing one of your family members doesn't make you a badass, a murderer maybe, but not a badass. Oh, and that phone scene where she calls multiple family members? Yeah, totally not stolen from the Digimon film. Man, Summer Wars is just a whole nother level when it comes to originality. It's just so uninspiring. I wonder how Arsianmi feels about this review. In years past, we always used to play as a family, but now everyone's so spread out and busy with their own lives. Now we get to the best aspect of the film, the animation. Produced by Madhouse as all Hosoda films are, the world of Oz presented is colorful, vibrant, and looks really polished. While it does have the same art style as the Digimon film, Summer Wars looks much more fluid in its animation with almost every scene feeling lively and energetic. The backgrounds as usual look beautiful with great blending of colors to make the world feel more natural. The animation really captures the essence of the environment both in the world of Oz as well as the real world. The world of Oz really sets the happy and friendly nature of the utopian society and the real world gives off the hot summer feel of a countryside home. Again however, like the girl who left through time, I don't really like the character designs of Summer Wars, not because they're bad per se, but because the characters lack any distinctive features that really separate them from one another. Overall however, the animation of this film is pretty great. I don't really have much to say about the soundtrack as none of the songs really stuck with me throughout the film, although I did notice the jolly and upbeat atmosphere tried to convey. The soundtrack was mostly composed of orchestral instruments played with a very lively and energetic tone that gave a very carefree and happy environment. The voice acting isn't amazing, but it's definitely up to standard. All the voices matched each family member's personality, down to the uncles, aunties, and the very obnoxious kids. There isn't any standout performances, however, it's believable enough that it doesn't detract from the overall experience. Being a rehash of the Digimon movie does that. As a whole, the soundtrack of Summer Wars isn't bad, although it's not memorable either, so take that how you will. Love Machine was programmed by me. <gasps> you created Love Machine? There might be some misconceptions about what I think of Summer Wars, so for once I'll answer it seriously. Do I hate Summer Wars? No. Do I think Summer Wars is a bad film? No. Do I like Summer Wars? <laughs> no. I just think Summer Wars is a mediocre film, but don't take my word for it, let's hear what other people have to say. Summer Wars? You mean that overhyped piece of shit? A bland ass protagonist, an annoying as fuck family, and a main plot that resembles the Digimon movie so much. One might think it's from the same director. Wait, hold on a minute. Well, that was a load of shit. Fuck off, Kevin. Jesus Christ, you are such an asshole. You're an absolute cunt. Okay, calculating all the scores and averaging everything out, Summer Wars receives a very average score of 5.5. For similar anime, I recommend the Digimon movie, Our War Game, as it's essentially a better version of Summer Wars condensed into 30 minutes. And Tokyo Godfathers, for a very unlikely Christmas tale about family. If you live in Australia or New Zealand, Summer Wars is available through Mad Men Entertainment on Blu-ray and DVD. And with that, join me sometime before the end of December, where I'll be reviewing Hosoda's most recent film, Ami and Yuki Wolf Children. Oh, and if you're gonna try and change my opinion of Summer Wars in the comments... Good luck.